I did egg dropping, and um, my hypothesis was the longer distance the egg falls, the more will occur, and that those are what it was. And my conclusion was as the distance the egg fell increased, the egg cracked more. And my data table had the attempts, height of inches, and the results. And then we tried 12 times. And I have the things for, we looked up free fall, velocity, um, gravity, and uh, uh, laceration. Um, and and each time I dropped the eggs from a height with our ruler, it like splat down like that. And um, if I would have kept going, I would have probably um, tried hard boiled eggs because it would be like cool to see when they dropped, if they stayed like that or they like went like that, if they were like hard. And um, that's what I did. The strip effect decides the difference it, the difference it takes to time someone um, for them to read the word in a different color. The strip effect was named after J. Ridley Strip, who discovered the phenomenon in the 1930s. Our hypothesis was, if a volunteer sees a color word in a different color, then it will take them longer to set. As you can see, you see our materials were two sheets of papers. We had a stopwatch, we had it to time which one it was say longer to say. And um, in our results, the word in the different color was this sheet of paper, and the word in the same color was this sheet of paper, and the word in different color took much longer for them to read. And we think that because um, people are usually tempted to read words instead of colors, and this time they were tricked because they had to read the color instead of the word. So we proved that our hypothesis was correct because it's, it's easier to read the word that matches the word. My science for project is great strengths. Um, um, the um, statement of purpose is I chose to do this project because I like Legos and I like engineering. I, I want to find out which type of bridge holds the most weight too. Um, I also made a bridge um, combining the best features from eat all of the other bridges um, to make a hybrid bridge. Um, and that bridge held the most. And I think my hybrid bridge would be effective in the real world. Um, the three types of bridges I made is the beam bridge, the arch bridge, the suspension bridge, and the hybrid bridge. Um, first, I made first I made um, the the bridges out of Legos. Then I laid put books on them to lay collapse, and then I weighed the books to see how much they weighed. Um, the, the beam bridge held 2 pounds, 10 ounces. The arch bridge held 24 pounds, 10 ounces. The suspension bridge held 23 pounds, 11 ounces. The hybrid bridge held 36 pounds, 10 ounces. Um, a big improvement. Um, a conclusion is... Um, the suspension bridge held Almost, wait, what? what? I learned in doing this project that different bridges are useful in different places. The beam bridge might be the least expensive, but is really useful when covering shorter distances. To cover longer distances, a, a multi-span beam bridge would be needed, which would co make it cost more. The arch bridge can cover longer distances and hold more weight, but it's difficult to build and cr costs more. This is because of the extra material needed to build the arch and the extra work needed to build it. The suspension bridge, like the arch bridge, can cover more distance and hold more weight, but it, it is even more expensive to build. So while my hybrid bridge held the most weight in my experiment, it isn't something that could be used everywhere since it will cost far more money than a simple beam bridge.
beam archer suspension bridge. That's that. My, my name is Ryan, and we are doing the five second rule. And we wonder if it is safe to eat something that has touched the ground for five seconds or less. And we think it is unsafe to eat something that has been on the ground. We also think the longer it is on the ground, the more bacteria it grows. What we used were gloves, three slices of bologna, three swabs, three dish petri dishes with neutron agar, a stopwatch, um, a incubator. We it says an electric blanket, but a science teacher gave us an incubator to use. A cooler, a thermometer, labels, and a camera to take the pictures. And my name is Peyton. And step by step, we put on gloves. We took out the bologna, and then we um, dragged the swabs over one of the um, pieces of bologna that hadn't touched the ground, and we uh, um, then dragged the swab from the bologna on the nutrient agar, and that's how much bacteria that it grew for in five days for um, That's how much it grew in five days, and it didn't even touch the ground. So, me and Ryan said we're never eating bologna again. And, and then, we we just did the same thing, except for longer times, to um, as we did for zero seconds on the um, 2.5 and 5 seconds. And for our results, we found out that part of our hypothesis was correct. We found that touch food touching the ground for five seconds was more unsafe to eat than food that hadn't touched the ground because five seconds grew a ton. And for our conclusion, it's simple. Don't eat food that has touched the ground. But please note the 2.5 seconds has the least amount of colonies because in taking turns we were un we weren't consistent with swabbing the bologna. And now, so it didn't grow more because because he uh, swabbed this one and I swabbed that one and that one. And we were thinking that we must have did it differently. Yeah. So we should have had the same person swab them. Uh huh. And we uh, um have a chart and. This is all the zero seconds, 2.5 seconds, and five seconds. And orange is, the light orange is 24 hours, the brown is 48 hours, the yellow is 72 hours, and the dark orange is 96 hours. And we think that the number, the numbers went down for the um, zero seconds and five seconds because these um, got, they got bigger. The smaller ones grew together and got bigger, so the amount went down. And we also placed all three of the petri dishes in the incubator <laughs> at and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And every 24 hours, we used to came out to take a picture of all the three petri dishes. And we recorded the um, data on a notepad that we forgot to bring. Well, it float. Let's try this ball first. Yep, it floats. Next, the pencil. The pencil float. Now for the eraser. It sank. Next, the marker. Yep, it floats. Now for the scissors. It sank. Okay. And that's the things that I test to see if it floats or not. 